Hello and welcome. My name is Leanne Mallet. I am the RTO, or the Registered Training Organisation Manager for Meditech Training College. We hold these uh, Meditech musings fortnightly. They're free. They go for 30 minutes. And for 30 minutes, we just shoot the breeze and talk about workplace scenarios that you'll find yourselves in potentially or have found yourselves in. And um, we find solutions to those problems. We post these up in the Facebook group and you can see there on the screen that the scenario I have is all about a FAF. And a FAF is a new support worker at Meditech Staffing. Um, oh, I think that's... Hello. The... Hello. Hi, Effie. How, How are you? Effie? How are you? Good, thank Just going you. down a bit, did I? Yes, yeah, see, we start down with the bottom of FAF message here. So a FAF is new. Thanks for joining us. And she works for Meditech Staffing, or we know who they are, and she's been working for the organisation for only two weeks, so she's a real newbie, still learning the ropes. She's gone through induction, she's done a hoist training, personal care training, it's all good, but she's only getting four hours a week. HR did say there would be more hours available. Uh, she's got two clients she supports, um, but they keep telling her, you know, I, I need more support, I need more support, why can't you do more hours? So she's um, handled that very professionally and said, oh, that's interesting. Um, I won't tell them that I want more hours. That's something I need to discuss with Meditech staffing. We don't like you discussing hours with the client. So we know that. But she doesn't know. She's feeling a little bit apprehensive because she's new to the organisation and she doesn't want to appear pushy. Um, it's not part of her nature to be assertive. And But she needs more hours. You know, HR said there would be more hours. She's got clients asking for more services. I'm still only getting the four hours. I really want for 30 hours. We need. I need more money coming in. I'm reluctant to call, doesn't know who to speak to and doesn't want to appear pushy. Is this a common scenario, Erin? Yes, sure is. Um, yes. So in that situation, I wouldn't worry about appearing to be pushy um, to the coordination team because it um, takes a bit of time for us to, you know, to, you know, think about the new um, support workers. So we do get a list of new support workers that come on board, so we're aware but we we do have our um, support workers that sort of come to come to mind straight away when we're trying to roster a shift. So um, to get to the front of our minds as such, call the office, um, call us to remind us that you're available and you're looking for work, what days you're looking for work. And um, whoever gets a call like that from our team, they'll send it around to the rest of our team, um, either by email or in our group chat, in our team's chat. And um, that just puts you more in the front of our mind and we'll then be able to, you know, remember that that you are there and wanting the work. And um, if you're really keen for the work, then we're keen to give it to you, basically. So um, we we actually love when new support workers come on board and they're actually really um, excited and wanting to work because that's not always the case with new support workers. They, you know, sometimes only have very limited availability. So we can't actually give them much much work. So yeah, we actually really love when people are looking for work and have great availability. Um, yeah, because it's good for us as That's well. That's your day easier. And uh, sure I forgot does. to introduce you after the official start, Erin, but of course, Erin <laughs> is uh, the service delivery team leader. So thank you, Erin, for joining us. And yeah, exactly. It's almost like you really need to make yourself known at the beginning, don't you? And it is yep. about that networking and you're not pushy. OK, um, it's welcomed. It's getting to know the team, the coordination team, letting them know that you are keen. You're keen, you're ready, you're available. And these guys work incredibly hard behind the scenes to roster and coordinate, you know, the hundreds of clients that they, we're looking after. So as Erin said, you know, you know what, how we think your mind is busy, you're focusing on what's in front of you. So you need to really get yourself in front of the team. And as Erin said, it's just a phone call. Call Meditech Staffing, have a chat to your coordinator and say, hey, listen, not getting enough hours, really keen to do more. Um, what can I do here? And that that's exactly what you need to do. So make that phone call. It's important. Yeah. And also, can I interrupt oh. also, um, when you are you haven't got a certificate and you've just started, what kind of services can you do? Can you do mental health? Can you do MS? Can you do showers? Because you haven't got a certificate and you've just started, correct? So what services, that, yeah. Yeah. What, so what um, services can you take on board? Only transport, so, really? Well, it depends on... um. 
Do you mean someone who's got no experience and no Correct. qualifications? Yep. Yeah, so pretty much it would be transport, social support um, and DA would be what you but can do. And again, at the same time, there are people that have just started and have mental health clients where they've got no experience. They have people with MS where they have no experience because um, that's how we all started off. That's how I started off in the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we wouldn't put someone who's brand new, what well, we wouldn't wouldn't be ideal for us to put someone who's brand new to the industry with a client who has, you know, quite um, challenging mental health issues. But we do have clients who have minor, more minor mental health issues. So we would ideally start off new people with clients like that till they get some more experience um, in, you know, working with all different types of people and that. And that's um, ideally what we're wanting to do, Ethie. Of course, I'm going to come in here as the training college manager. Do you want your Cert 3? I can help you with that. Um, I've got my Cert 3. Good I've on you. It. Good on you. Because then, if you, and as Ethie has explained, if you've got your Cert 3, you get more hours because you're more qualified. Simple as that. And I can help you get the Cert 3. You can pay as little as $900 or you can do a traineeship. And you can, we can help allocate you more complex clients just through the training process and you are guided by a mentor so thanks for bringing that up Effie and it is it's a challenge isn't it um in, in this skill shortage which is why it's really important if you're keen to learn let us know we've got free learning modules if you get being allocated a client with mental health you're thinking to myself I have no idea what to do here we've got an e-learning module on you know supporting clients with mental health issues you can do that before you go and visit the clients online, 100% free, 100% free. I know online. if you don't have, if you don't get the experience on the job, you don't learn. I this understand is exactly, that. This is exactly right. Yes, exactly right. So thank you so much for your contribution. Any comments, please don't hesitate to come in or to put questions in the chat. So we're on the money here. We're back with Afaf. She's been there. Oh, and my dog has just come back from a dark bark, her walk and barking. So I do apologise about that. So Afaf is there, she's been there for a month now. She made that phone call. She's getting more shifts. One of her clients, though, Bernard, um, she's only doing domestic assistance, but she's noted Bernard has an ulcer on his leg due to his diabetes. She's, less, she's noticed he's less mobile. The first time, you know, she visited him, he was moving around. But last couple of visits, he's, he's just sitting in the chair. And you know that it's your responsibility to report this in the progress notes. You, whatever you have observed, you must report. You don't have opinions, you have facts. We've talked about this very clearly in our musings. So you've, you've reported it in progress notes, but then the next week you go back and you can see that Bernard is in a lot of discomfort and you think, what, what's going on? It's looking a bit nasty. You say to him, has anyone attended to your ulcer? And he says, tells you no. So you think, surely the case manager is looking after this. So. Is it your responsibility to do something here? You've put in the progress notes. You've done your bit. You're just the domestic assistance um, support worker. What are they meant to do in this situation? What should a FAF do in this situation? You have to um, report it, I reckon. Sorry. If, uh, no, I'm, go for it, Effie. No, honey, sorry. I thought um, you put the question out there, Leanne, for oh, everyone. Sorry. Erin had to... Sorry, Erin. No, 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 go, go, Effie. Effie, no, 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 tell you us go, what you go, go, go. Please, you've got the experience. Tell us what you no, would that's do. That's okay. I'm listening. I'm listening because I'm not that experienced. <laughs> I mean, there's something out there that I don't know. Maybe. Tell Effie, me. you probably know more than me. You've been in this no, industry no, far no, longer no. than me. <laughs> no, tell me. Uh, sorry for butting in. Sorry. Please don't. Don't apologise. That's fantastic. Whoever wants to go, go. Go, Erin. <laughs> okay. Well, I was going to say the exact thing you were just starting to say um so call the office so in the first instance that you notice the client does have um an ulceral wound on him um that's not dressed so um call the office um because even if it's written in the progress notes um we don't have the manpower to read every single progress notes that that is written every single day um to put into perspective we deliver about eight thousand hours in total um, across Sydney and the Central Coast. So um, to read so many progress notes is impossible for us. Um, mm. So yes, noted any progress notes, but also make a call to the office to let us know. Then we will pass it on to the case manager. Case managers are likely to ask us to organise a nurse to come and um, check the ulcer and then they'll, you know, start providing the whatever wound care is necessary for the client um, after that. So yeah. 
yeah. And so you would still put in your progress notes, but in your notes you would say, you know, call the office, spoke to whoever um, to report the ulcer on the clients on yeah. the client. It is absolutely your responsibility to follow this up. Okay. Everything you observed, Mitzi, you've got something to say there? Yeah. Hi guys. So I, I didn't want to interrupt. I'm sorry I came in a bit late. Um, just adding to what um Erin just said, and we've had this discussion in the office, I think this week with Erin, when I was asking about, you know, what happens when we miss progress notes. Um, you all have a care plan sent to you or you can access it through Procura. Um, if first point of call, call the office, report it to someone, speak to someone so they can make the case manager aware. If you can't get through the, the office, like Erin said, you know, they're crazy busy sometimes and it's sometimes really difficult to speak to someone because, you you know, you have to wait. Um, have a look at the care plan. The case manager's name is there. The contact details for the case manager are there. If it's me, for example, I like if I'm contacted. Call. Okay, so call, you mean. Yeah. call what email. about an email? If we send yes. out an email, is that even yeah. better? A call or an email to myself directly. I I appreciate them. So but on you know, the care plan, sometimes is... need to be action straight away. And so you know, the, sometimes the, they are on delayed the, because you can't get contacted. So on the care yeah. plan is the details of the case manager on there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At the bottom it says, you know, who the case manager is. It says it, it says it in the Procura app. Look, I'm going to open up my Procura and I will tell you. So, Erin? Excellent. We'll come back to that, Mitzi, so that you can yeah. demonstrate that. But, yeah, very much is, you know, you are advocating for your client, yeah? You are supporting your client. Your client needs your help. You need to be proactive here, okay? You need to take responsibility and you need to start problem solving this because you don't want to come back next week and have had no response on Bernard's ulcer because obviously that would be a very big problem, okay? Um, so, yeah, you follow it up. Tap, knock, ring, call, email, SMS, whatever you have to do. Yep. Rattle some cages. Smoke signal, okay? you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do what you have to do. Um, as Erin has said, they're waiting for your call. They're, if they don't pick up, if they're busy, email your contact, you may have a contact in the court, you know, the case manager. If you don't know it, go to the procurer, look at the care plan, find out who the case manager is. You'll probably see their mobile there. SMS them. Okay. And you know what? If you're a new um, support worker, make it your business to know who the case managers are. Yeah. Yeah, and it would be good. It'd be great. I know that uh, we do, have, you know, it'd be great if we could have some sort of contact sheet for them. Um, yes. Maybe that's something we can think about for the case managers. So, I, I like being involved. Yeah. Okay. Others prefer, other case managers are just like emails, you know, they're already yeah. getting a lot of calls. So it's not something we can yeah. just say blanket, call the case manager. Um, mm -hmm. But so, but you can SMS them, you can email them, you can, you know, tap and knock and ring and rattle some cages, do your thing, put it in your progress notes, do your job, basically, it's your job. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll wait for you to bring that up, Mitzi, and we'll go to the next case mm -hmm. study. Um, okay, she's been going, uh, that's going really well. Okay, she now understands the importance of the individual care plan. She's advised that these are available in the Procura app. However, Sarah, her new client, when she looked at before she was allocated Sarah, she looked at the Procura app, app. she did what she had to do, but the, the plan wasn't there and she'd run out of time. And so she visited Sarah, got there, unbeknownst to her. Sarah has a history of aggressive behaviour. And during the visit, Tom, that should say Sarah, becomes agitated, agitated and starts yelling at Afaf so much so that Afaf becomes quite frightened and cuts the service short. Now Afaf is thinking this job was going so well. Oh my God, what have I done? Uh, what do I do? I was really enjoying this job. I'm sure he's got, she's going to complain. So obviously, you know, with Shane from the group, you can see here she should have spoken with community before she proceeded to the service, okay? If there's no care plan in Procura, I can't do my job without a care plan, okay? And they will solve it by either uploading it or emailing you the care plan. Now, Effie, with your experience, how important is that care plan? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Gives you everything. What's Tells going on? Going, yeah. what's happening, what's wrong with the person, of course. Yeah, I think it's the A and the the O. It's the beginning of everything. The beginning and the end of everything. Don't do anything unless you know the exactly. client's needs, yeah? Exactly. There's so much important information there that for your safety, 
for your well-being, for your ability to do your job. It's in the care plan, okay? And, um, yeah, anything you want to say about that, Erin? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so with all the clients that are Meditech clients, the care plan should be in the app accessible to you. But if it happens to not be there, let the office know so we can send you an emailed version of it and so we can look into why there's an issue with the app and it's not there. Um, for our brokerage clients, so they're the clients that other service providers um, broker to us, we don't upload them into the app. So in so if you're so if you're supporting a brokerage client, we should be sending that to you uh, via email. So if for whatever reason you can't access care plan information in the app, please just let us know because it only takes us a minute just to flick it through to you um, in an email and it can avoid any issues that you come across by not having the information that you need that's in the care plan. Exactly. And please, please do make the effort to read the care plan information because we do find that um, a lot of complaints or issues that come up, um, they could have been avoided had the care plan been read. So it is very it's important. The, hunt, as Effie said, it's the A to the Z, <laughs> to the Z. Yeah, it's everything. And Effie's speaking from experience there. So thank you, Effie, and thank you, Erin. Do you have okay. that to share now, Mitzi? Yes, yeah, so I've oh. checked, okay, on Procura, the care plan, when the case manager creates it, okay, it doesn't have our details, but it only has at the bottom of the page the name of the case manager that created it. Okay. Now, easy way of contacting the client or the case managers, like maybe get a list of who the case managers are, and our email address is our first name at meditechstaffing.com.au. Super simple. Super yeah, simple. But what about, what about if it's a brokerage client? What do you do there? But I'm talking about Meditech clients. Okay. If it's a brokerage client, that could be the reason there's no care plan on Procura. So well, there don't, and that's there when there you is, contact community there team. Is, there is a care plan on Procura if they're not um, Meditech clients. Because mm -hmm. I have a client that's with Salvation Army and no care plans on Procura. Good, good. So th mm. there could be a reason. So, you know, don't if it's not there, find it first, step one, yeah? Well, that's yep. all the scenarios I had. So we're going to take this opportunity. I just want to put it out to the community. We've got a great um, attendance this week. Do, does anyone here have a workplace problem? Don't Please don't hesitate in asking any type of question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, are you new? Do you want to know what's going on? You've got a question for the team. You've got the service team delivery leader here. Ask away. You've got Mitzi, a case manager. Any questions out there? You can unmute yourself or put it into the app, uh, chat. Mm -hmm. Most people are thinking about that. Um, Effie, you've been doing this for a while. Ten years. Well, that's a little while, eh? Hey? So what, <laughs> what would be your advice to new starters? Okay. Um, as you said, to read the care plan, to go in with the positive thinking, that's how I went in in the beginning. I mean, you do get the aggressive clients from now and then, like, I mean, not all the time, but I got thrown in without a certificate from the beginning, um, doing dementia clients, doing, um, you know, and I didn't know all this stuff. Mm. But then again, I, I did learn on the job. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you and do. Also, learn. I, you have, have <laughs> I have found a lot of support workers. Um, I've heard actually, not that um, a pe clients have told me that there's a lot of people going in and asking, you know, what, how much money do you have? How much do you owe on this house? Oh. Um, are you by yourself? Or you've got children? Things like that, you know. And um, I think at the end of the day, you shouldn't be asking those kind of questions. But no, as I said not. in the beginning, um, you go in positive. Um, you try and do your job as much as you can, like as the best as you can. And if you do find a problem, you know, ring community or speak with the, the case manager and see how you go. I had clients like that in the beginning and then I had to ring Meditech and tell them, you know, I didn't know about dementia at the time. So I had people that were aggressive and I had to leave because I didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And that's the bad thing about it. When you're going into a job that you have no experience with, how are you supposed to handle these people? There's no <laughs> courses. Like as a one-on-one, -on -one, there's no course. You do it online so it doesn't tell you. I didn't explain it in the beginning. You know what I mean? With the course, 
if you don't do the job to learn how it's done, like to see the person with dementia, to get told off or, you know, you don't learn. Yeah, you learn That's by the scenario. We, we do a lot of um, scenarios in our training. So, you know, how important is the, the education of the Cert 3 for you, Effie? Did that teach you a lot? It did teach me a lot, but I think mainly doing the job in person instead of the – like, you know what I mean? Like, the certificate 3 is a paper for me. If I didn't go into different houses to to see – these different people um, with MS, with schizophrenia, with uh, dementia, what's a paper going to do if I don't put hands on? If you don't be proactive and, and perhaps do some yes. of the e-learning modules. I mean, we uh, the Cert 3 we're now doing as a traineeship, so you've got one-on-one -on -one support and um, our trainers visit you in the workplace. So, you know, you could have a trainer come and visit you with one of your more complex clients. Um, the and voice. It's a great, I didn't know uh, how to use voice. voice. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. We've got all I of that training. I got into the office once. This was years ago. Okay, I became the dummy and then the other person did it for me. But you have to learn, even maybe a week, you know, to, to learn how to do it. That's it's right. It's not that simple with one hour or two hours. Yep. You don't learn. Yeah, so if you're wanting to educate yourself, thanks, Effie. Don't hesitate to call the college. We've got lots of different pathways that are all affordable or free, depending on your circumstances. You can get the Cert 3 for $900, and it's the same as a traineeship. If you're on a visa, you can get the Cert 3. It's like a traineeship. Um, you've got one-on-one -on -one support with a trainer, and it's going to give you the skills and knowledge. You can do it the hard way and learn on the job. You're going to be doing a lot of that anyway. I think that's just part of the course. But it's going to give you more confidence to do your job if you get the Cert 3, and it's going to give you more hours, and it's going to give you uh, more career prospects as well. Look, an another idea as well, another idea, okay. <clears throat> if you've never worked with dementia, then you're a new support worker and you've been asked to go and you've been told that, you know, you've got some dementia clients, um, maybe ask if there is a possibility that the case manager can organise a buddy shift with an yeah. experienced support worker with this client prior to you going on your own. Yep. Tell me something else. I mean, I'm getting angry now and I don't want to be angry. There are people that have just started with Meditech and they've got dementia clients, brand new people. And you're telling me now to ring the office and get help. How many people do you have out there with dementia clients? And they've got no experience whatsoever. Whatsoever, no experience. How many people are out there working and they've got schizophrenia clients with no certificate? And you're telling me now to get the certificate for $900. Before you put people on board, they should have the certificate. Yeah, and, he... and also another thing, you don't let them shower people because they don't have the certificate, but you let them go to dementia clients and clients with uh, schizophrenia. Come on. That's all right. Effie, Effie, look, all these concerns that you have are valid. So I think maybe what you need to do is contact one of the managers in the office, voice your um, concerns, and maybe, you know, if the, but what are you, can be investigated. You guys are there for the same thing, aren't you? Pardon? You all got you work for Meditech as well. Your your um case managers, Erin is course, been there but for there's years. There's also but... a hierarchy, you know. And so like you we... think they'll listen to me? Well, Effie, we're listening to you, and I can hear I know the frustration. I'm giving you a suggestion, so yeah. Can I just also just also just in in defence, you know, I understand your frustration. And it's not just Meditech staffing. The health sector is under enormous pressure. There is a huge skilled shortage. And the training that we're offering now, I'd like to think in the past year that we have improved um, the amount of training that is available. Our staff now go out, personal care, they've got training, hoist, they've got training. We have over 50 e-learning modules, okay? We've got 50 e-learning modules. They're all free. So if you have a client that has dementia, we've got a module for you to do to build your skills, okay? How long do those yeah. modules, uh, say you did it, say I did it five years ago, is it, this, is it, has it changed or do I have to do it again? I think it's up to you personally, Effie. You okay. can build your PD, you know, maybe it's a good refresher. They're free. Like there's things here about communicating. Communicating with your clients, dysphagia, epile um, epilepsy, we've got dementia, we've got mental health. 
Now, this is all pain management. Peg okay, feeling. And if you also, I'd like to point out, you know, Meditech over the last 12, 18 months has been going through a lot of changes. So we are I going know. through a lot of, you know, like okay. researching, seeing where, where, you know, we're falling behind and we're doing continuous improvement. Yes. That's what Leanne's role yep. is for. This is what Meditech uh, Musings was also added to. So as a platform to assist, support, key you guys, you know, take things back to management and apply things. It's you not going to happen overnight, but Effie, it's continuous yeah. improvement. Yes, and I believe that we are working in the right direction. But Effie, I hear your passion, and that's what we want out there, passionate people who want to make sure the service that we are delivering collectively is always improving. So thank you, Effie, and your voice is important. If you've got something to say, make a phone call. That's, what, that's our main message. Do not hesitate picking up the phone. I'm frustrated about this. I would like to know about that. If you don't ask, you don't know. And as long as you are professional in your communication and that you have the uh, thought of your client's well-being and care at the forefront of your mind, the well, the forefront of your mind should be your own well-being. I don't want to take on a client with dementia. I don't know enough about it. What education can you give me before I take on this client? Ask that question. Instead of getting angry, saying, I've got a client with mental health and I don't know anything about it, Ask the community, what, what can I do? I need to learn more about mental health. Why don't you go and have a chat with the people down at the college? Have you read the emails that comes out for all the free training? You get this email sent out every fortnight, guys. You can click on any link here. Say you want to learn about hoists you can, or falls prevention. You click on it. It takes you to the enrolment. You fill out the details. No payment necessary. And in, you're enrolled. You get the email. You get access to really high quality e-learning modules with really high quality formative learning activities. Okay, so and approach the college if you need some face to face. You know, or speak to Leanne. Speak to you know our trainers. They're amazing down there. That's exactly right. And we will find a solution. We want you to feel 100% confident in your job. Okay, so if you're feeling like you need help, speak up. OK, um, thank you, Effie, for your interaction. Um, really very much appreciated for 10 years service. I think that's a round of applause because I, I mean, honestly, yeah. honestly, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough thank job. You. And I'm it learning is. it is a tough job that requires extensive variety of skills, problem solving, empathy, caring, advocacy, communication, critical thinking, OK, persistence, assertiveness, good communication it's not skills. Job. It's not an easy job. the most difficult jobs there yes. are out there. And we hope that these musings are helping you um, and we appreciate you coming along. And thank you, Erin, for your help today. You've been a wealth of knowledge. I think we hit the nail on the head with these scenarios this week and I like to think that we've helped you out there. So um, thanks, everyone, for attending. See you in a fortnight's time. If you've got any thank comments you. that you would like us, any topics you'd like covered, shoot me an email, put them in the chat and thank we'll you, find Anne. solutions to common problems. All right? Well done, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.